To edit forms, you will click on Company, Setup, and then Form Setup. There is a large list of forms that SiteLink already has. Many times you will be editing an existing form. For example, if we look at the receipt, it's important that you edit this receipt. If you create another form and call it my receipt, for example, SiteLink is not going to print my receipt when a payment is taken. It's looking specifically for the receipt form. So it's very important that you edit this particular form for a receipt. Same thing with your lease. SiteLink allows you to have up to six leases, which you can define by unit type. If you have one lease, you're going to be editing lease number one. Again, you're not going to create a new lease and call it my lease because SiteLink is looking at lease number one to process that particular lease. Also, with the invoice form, that is another form that SiteLink is looking at a specific place to print that form during that particular action. So the three main forms that I see that coming into play again are the lease, the receipt, and the invoice. That doesn't mean that you can't have your own forms. Maybe you have a form that no one else uses. In that case, you're going to click Add in the upper right-hand corner to create a new form. In that case, we can either add an HTML form or an RTF form. What is the difference? An RTF form is similar to Notepad. It allows you to put in text, it allows you to put in the verbiage that you want, but it doesn't have much in terms of the ability to have a high quality image, your logo, or clickable links to show people your website, for example. So then I would choose Add HTML Form. So when we add a new letter, we click Add HTML Form. To save it, we'll go to File, Save as New Form, and it asks us for a title. So in this case, I'm going to call this Example Form. Click OK. Do you want to save this form? OK. And now, in our list, we would have Example Form here. To edit a form, you highlight it and click Edit on the right-hand side. We're editing our HTML form, and we can type in whatever verbiage we want, and then click the Save button to save it. Editing forms does not necessarily take a lot of time. What does take the most time of any form and the first form that you definitely want to edit is the lease. Many forms in SiteLink you may not even want to edit. So for example the receipt form, if we double click on it, this receipt has a place for your logo, it shows the tenant name and address, what they paid off. You might be fine with this receipt. If so, leave it alone. But for your lease, for obvious reasons, the lease will have different verbiage for you than it does for someone in a different state, for example, or a different country. So we're going to double click the lease. This is an example lease. What I tell people to do is, when you come into our lease, obviously this is not the same verbiage you're going to use, but I tell people to click at the top and then move all of this wording down so that you can type in what you want and then bring the keywords at the bottom into your form. So what do I mean by keywords? Keywords are like mail merge fields in our program that will bring up specific data to that person. So if we look at this lease here at the bottom, it says, this agreement dated, and then it has this greater than less than sign that says tenant.lease sign date. By having this keyword in this form, when this is actually printed out, it's going to say this agreement dated today's date. Let's say today's date is uh, November 7th. It would say this agreement dated November 7th between. It's not going to print out and say tenant name. It's going to say John Smith if John Smith was the person entered into the system and so on. We have all these different keywords that represent data. If you go to the top of the screen and click on insert and then keyword, this gives you the list of all the keywords and what they represent. You can come in here and click print at the top and print that list and have it for you to look at. You could also right click in the form and click on keyword list and this shows you all the different types of keywords here. That's great and I recommend that you print it out but initially, if this is your first time using SiteLink, if we're looking at our lease for example, when you scroll through the previous lease, this is why I'm telling you to put it towards the bottom, it's very clear what these keywords represent and 90% of these keywords are what you're going to use anyway in your lease. So there's the tenant lease date, the tenant name, the width and depth of the unit, and so on. So what you can do is type in your form. Let's just say we're putting example verbiage, 
and then we want to put in the tenant name. You could highlight tenant name and hit Control C to copy or right click and copy and then paste that keyword here. Instead of having to go up to insert keyword and then look up the keyword, you can copy and paste the keywords that are in the previous form. Once that's done and you've grabbed the keywords that you want, highlight the remainder of the document that's not your verbiage and backspace it, delete it. So now all that we have is your verbiage and keywords that you want. If there was a keyword that was not part of that initial list, then again come up here to insert keyword. Maybe you want the keyword that says here's what your late fee would be if you owed us a late fee. Highlight it, click OK, and now it puts in that keyword where we put the cursor. You can either type it in or insert it. So it's not necessarily an easy process, it's not necessarily a difficult process, but it is time consuming. Obviously, typing in your verbiage and putting in those keywords can take time, but once you've finished the lease, that's the big one, and the rest of your notices will take a lot less time. If you copy and paste verbiage from let's say a word document it's very possible that when you paste it into this lease or any form that the spacing may not be exact when you paste it in that's very common so once you paste it in you can backspace to get it how you would like it to be when we're dealing with an HTML form and we edit it if we want to insert a logo we're going to click up insert at the top and then image and put in the location of your image so in other words this image would be stored on your website. Let's just say your website was www.myselfstorage.com forward slash logo.jpg. If that was your URL, then you would type that in. Now, I don't have a logo at that location, but by putting in that link, that's going to draw from your website and put that link in the form. That way, there is no restriction in terms of file size because it's pulling from your website. If we want to put in a clickable link, we go up here to insert and then hyperlink type in what that URL is type in what that URL is in the URL box and click OK and now we see a link that's clickable so if we emailed this form and we had a link that said go here to pay online when they get this form through an email they could highlight it with their mouse or if they're using their smart device their, their iPhone for example it will bring up the URL it's important to note on the right hand side that we have a selection that says use standard RTF or use HTML. Normally you're going to pick one of the two. You're probably not going to make two versions, an HTML or, or an RTF. So again, pick which one you want. If it's an HTML, if you want a nice crisp logo and clickable links, that's when you're going to choose HTML. When we highlight a form, you'll see on the right hand side that it says move in availability. Included means it's included during the move in. Obviously, with a lease, you're going to include that during the move-in because clearly you need to have a lease. Let me just pick a random one. If I choose insurance sign-up form, maybe you want that included, maybe you don't during the move-in. With the move-in availability, if I choose included, that means it's going to be checked for sure during the move-in. We could uncheck it, but it's by default included. If we put optional, it's not checked by default, but we could check it during the move-in. It's there as a choice when we move someone in. If you choose disabled, that form is not available during a move-in. Typical forms that would be available, lease for sure, lease summary, which is like a welcome letter potentially, insurance sign-up form, and then also an auto pay authorization form. Again, you determine what form or forms you potentially would want to see during the move-in, but on the right-hand side that allows you to choose what you want. And once that's chosen, click Save to finalize.